It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we go, chapter four, lesson number seven. We're now moving on to look at second order differential equations. Woo! So first of all, what is a second order differential equation? Well, a second order differential equation is one that contains the second derivative, such as this one here. We have a d2y by dx squared plus b dy by dx plus c y, and that equals f of x. And a, b, and c are just going to be constants. They will just be numbers. If this part here, if f of x equals zero, the equation is said to be what's known as dun 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 dun, dun homogeneous. And if f of x does not equal zero, then the equation is said to be dun 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 dun, dun non-homogeneous. So what we're going to look at over the next few lessons is second order differential equations, but we are going to start this one off looking at the general solution of homogeneous differential equations. So, these are of the form a d2y by dx squared plus b dy by dx plus c y equals zero. They are all equal to zero. And this is how we find the general solution. The first thing that we do is we form a quadratic known as the auxiliary equation. Ooh. And that will look like a k squared plus b k plus c equals zero. These values of a, b, and c are just the coefficients of d2y by dx squared, dy by dx, and y in our second order differential equation. Step two, we then find the roots of the auxiliary equation, and we do that just by factorizing this quadratic. So we find the roots, and then once we know the roots, well, we can get the general solution, but that depends on the nature of the roots. There are three options. We can have real and distinct roots. We could have real and equal roots, or in advanced higher, we will move on to look at complex conjugates. So first of all, looking at real and distinct, well, if the roots are real and distinct, then you know you will have two values for k. Let's say k equals p and k equals q. The general solution of the second order differential equation then will be of the form y equals a e to the power of px plus b e to the power of q x. So that is what it will look like if the roots are real and distinct. If the roots are real and equal, so in other words, if we have k equals p, but that is going to be a repeated root or a double root or an equal root, then the general solution will be of the form y equals, and in brackets you'd have ax plus b times by e to the power of px. And the last one, if we you have a complex conjugates, so you have k equals p plus or minus q i, then the general solution will be of the form e to the power of px times by, and in brackets, a sine qx plus b cos qx, where a and b in each of these are constants. So let's look at some examples. Example one, find the general solution of the second order differential equation d2y by dx squared plus 2dy by dx take away 8y equals zero. So the first thing, we are wanting this auxiliary equation. Remember, we take the coefficients of d2y by dx squared, in this case here it'll be one, dy by dx, positive two, and y, negative, negative eight. So the auxiliary equation will be one k squared plus two k take away eight, equals zero. The next step is to solve for k, and we do that by factorizing. So that will give us, brilliant, k plus four, k take away two. So in other words, k equals negative four, and k equals two. The roots therefore are real and distinct. That is something we have been doing for years. So the general solution of this second order differential equation will be, well, if you look back here, when we had the different types of general solution. Because the roots are real and distinct, we'll have a e to the power of px plus b e to the power of qx. We know these values of k are negative four and two, so p and q are going to be negative four and two. Doesn't matter which way around you have them, so we're gonna have y equals a e to the negative four x plus b e to the power of two x. And that there 
will be the general solution. Example two, find the general solution of the second order differential equation, d2y by dx squared, take away six, dy by dx plus nine y equals zero. Once again, we start this off by finding the auxiliary equation and then solving it. So the auxiliary equation, take the coefficients of d2y by dx squared, dy by dx and y. So we've got one d2y by dx squared, so we'll have one k squared. We've got take away six dy by dx, so we'll have take away 6k, and plus 9y would go to plus 9. Remember, that's equal to 0. If you solve that, solve it by factorising. So factorise, we'll have k take away 3 times k take away 3, which means then that you'll have k take away 3 squared. Woo! And if you have that, then it means the only value for k is going to be 3. It is a repeated root. 3, k equals 3. So you have real and equal roots. Once again, if you think back to that table, well, when the roots are real and equal, so if k equals p, if you get a repeated root, then the general solution is y equals ax plus b in brackets, e to the power of px. So our general solution here will be y equals ax plus b in brackets, and it'll be e to the power of 3x. Perfect. 3x. You got it. Example three, find the general solution of the second order differential equation, d2y by dx squared plus four dy by dx plus 13y equals zero. Once again, to get the general solution, we need to get this auxiliary equation. Abby, what would that be? Brilliant, you'd have one k squared because the coefficient of d2y by dx squared is one. Then what would you have? Good, plus four k because the coefficient of dy by dx is four. And on the end, Abby? Brilliant, plus 13 equals zero because the coefficient of y is 13. After that, solve that, factorize it. What would you get? Perfect, it cannot be factorized. This quadratic does not factorize. So if you get one that doesn't factorize, what do you have to use? Excellent, the quadratic formula. So for your quadratic formula, let's take the coefficients of k squared, k, and this number. So a is gonna be one, b is gonna be four, and c equals 13. Sub that into your quadratic formula to find k negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That will give us negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared. Take away 4 times a times c. It'll be 1 times 13. And it's all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Work that out and you get negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 over 2. If you don't know how to solve this yet, you may wish to look at chapter 12. If I'm teaching this in class, I will have shown you the first lesson of complex numbers. Because what you need to know is that the square root of the negative 36 can be found by splitting that up. Negative 36 is negative one times 36. So it means root negative 36, you could write it as negative one, the square root of negative one, times by the square root of 36. Square root of 36 is six, and the square root of negative one we call i. So we will have six i. So you've got negative four plus or minus six i over two, and if you divide both the real and imaginary part by two, you will end up with negative two plus or minus three i. This means that the roots are, you got it, they're complex conjugates. If you want more information on complex conjugates, again, just look at chapter 12. But the general solution then is going to be, well, if we think back to this awesome wee table, k equals p plus or minus qi. So with the real part is negative 2. So we're going to have e to the power of negative 2x, e to the power of negative 2x. And then in brackets, we'd have a sine qx plus b cos qx. Well, q is going to be this imaginary part. Just take the number, it's going to be 3, so we'd have a sine 3x plus b cos 3x, and that there will be the general solution. This is an introduction to solving second order differential equations. Try some of them on page 96, see how they go. Just remember this table here. Hello, don't forget me! Have fun, bye! Woo!